This is Damian McNamara, and I'm at the Miami Children's Hospital postgraduate course, where a presentation was just given for pediatricians with an update on proteomics and genomics and what's going on in this exciting area where clinicians and researchers are working together to tailor medicines and therapies to specific patients. Yeah, so we have uh, built a very large-scale biobank at uh, Children's Hospital uh, and uh, we are working now actively in approximately uh, 40 to 50 different disease areas and three of the most advanced ones where we have identified uh, a subset of patients who have genetic mutations uh, and subsequently identified a therapy that has actually been developed for a different disorder and be able to reposition that therapy into this new area. Uh, uh, the examples of those are uh, neuroblastoma, which is one of the most common pediatric cancer uh, uh, among the sort of the solid tumors. It's the most lethal and most severe. Now the two other examples that I wanted to mention is uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. There we have found that there are certain uh, signaling uh, networks of genes in the brain that have to do with um, sort of transmitting uh, uh, the signals between the brain cells. They have structural variations and what that means is that there's sometimes just by chance that there's a copy of a whole gene that gets removed or deleted when the genome is being replicated uh, when a baby is being born. And these mutations, they sometimes are inherited from the parents, but sometimes they just happen, and we call them de novo. And if they are present, the uh, uh, sort of the signaling pathway that deals with these uh, mediators is reduced by about 50%. And we believe that this may cause ADHD in about 15 to 20% of uh, children. And the interesting thing is that you find the pathway, you find the genetic mutation, and then you go looking for existing medications right, that might right. address it. Right? And now we have found the medication which is sort of spot on, works to basically amplify the protein which is made by this particular pathway. So we believe that we now will have a very effective therapy which is not going to work for everybody, but it's going to work for maybe 10, 15, 20 percent of patients with ADHD, but may work very effectively for them and actually restore what they are missing and could, could almost cure them in that setting. What is also very interesting is that not only do we show that these copy number mutations are present in ADHD. They're also present in autism patients and they're also present in schizophrenia patients. So we are now starting to phenotype patients based on molecular genetic findings and it probably makes no difference whether the patient has autism or ADHD. If he has one of the gene being knocked out and the pathway is disrupted and reduced, he, will very, he or she will very likely respond to therapy that restores it independent of whether that's ADHD or schizophrenia or autism. I think this is sort of the biggest um, message or concept that we have today and, and sort of the one that we can really do something about right now.